Grade eleven, English language, listening, two thousand and fifteen to two thousand and sixteen, semester one, first session. While I'm reading your instructions, the teacher will check from the back of the class to make sure that everybody can hear. The teacher will not stop the CD. You will hear each text three times. The first time, only listen. The second time, complete the task. And the third time, check your work. The examination will start now. Question one. Look at question one on your exam paper. You're going to hear a conversation between an office manager and her boss. But first, you have thirty seconds to study the task. Now listen for the first time. Ah,、oh, you're back. How was the conference? Oh, great! I picked up lots of new ideas. Good. Anyway, I just wanted to check about our weekly staff meeting. Nine o'clock start as usual. Yes. And what's the main topic this time?、Uh, I want to collect ideas for promoting our new collection of bracelets and necklaces. Right. And how much time will we need? Three or four hours, as usual. No, I want the meeting to last no more than one hour. That'd be good if we can do it. Oh, I think we will. Right, I'll just check the room. I'll come with you. Hey, what happened to all the chairs? We're going to have a stand-up meeting. It's one of the ideas I got from the conference. You mean we'll have to stand the whole time? Yes, but it'll make the meeting much shorter. When people speak, they'll stick to the point, and not waste time talking about things that are not important. Hmm, interesting. You see, there was a really good presenter at the conference, a researcher from Cambridge University. She explained the science to us. She said that if you stand up, it activates the body to pump more oxygen to the brain. Basically, we think more quickly when we stand up. Really, is this a new idea?、Uh, not at all. During the First World War, British army officers used to hold all their meetings standing up, and that was a hundred years ago. I didn't know that. So, do you plan to hold all our meetings like this? Uh, no, only our staff meetings at the beginning of every week. Okay.、Uh, by the way, I've just thought of one possible problem. What about George? He's the best ideas man we've got, but he's over sixty now. I'm not sure we should ask him to stand up for a whole hour. Oh right, I'd forgotten about George. Thanks for reminding me. Of course, we'll provide a chair for him. And anybody else who really needs it. Ah, here they come now. I wonder how they'll react to this. Usually, people don't like it when things change.、Uh, don't worry. I'll start by explaining why we're doing this. I'm sure they'll love the idea. Hmm. Good luck with that. Now listen again and complete the task. Ah,、oh, you're back. How was the conference? Oh, great! I picked up lots of new ideas. Good. Anyway, I just wanted to check about our weekly staff meeting. Nine o'clock start as usual. Yes. And what's the main topic this time?、Uh, I want to collect ideas for promoting our new collection of bracelets and necklaces. Right. And how much time will we need? Three or four hours as usual. No. I want the meeting to last no more than one hour. That'd be good if we can do it. Oh, I think we will. 
Right. I'll just check the room. I'll come with you. Hey, what happened to all the chairs? We're going to have a stand-up meeting. It's one of the ideas I got from the conference. You mean we'll have to stand the whole time? Yes, but it'll make the meeting much shorter. When people speak, they'll stick to the point and not waste time talking about things that are not important. Hmm, interesting. You see, there was a really good presenter at the conference, a researcher from Cambridge University. She explained the science to us. She said that if you stand up, it activates the body to pump more oxygen to the brain. Basically, we think more quickly when we stand up. Really? Is this a new idea? Uh, not at all. During the First World War, British Army officers used to hold all their meetings standing up. And that was a hundred years ago. I didn't know that. So, do you plan to hold all our meetings like this? Uh, no, only our staff meetings at the beginning of every week. OK. Uh, by the way, I've just thought of one possible problem. What about George? He's the best ideas man we've got, but he's over 60 now. I'm not sure we should ask him to stand up for a whole hour. Oh, right. I'd forgotten about George. Thanks for reminding me. Of course we'll provide a chair for him. And anybody else who really needs it. Ah, here they come now. I wonder how they'll react to this. Usually people don't like it when things change. Ah, don't worry. I'll start by explaining why we're doing this. I'm sure they'll love the idea. Mm, good luck with that. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Ah, oh, you're back. How was the conference? Oh, great. I picked up lots of new ideas. Good. Anyway, I just wanted to check about our weekly staff meeting. Nine o'clock start as usual? Yes. And what's the main topic this time? Uh, I want to collect ideas for promoting our new collection of bracelets and necklaces. Right. And how much time will we need? Three or four hours as usual? No. I want the meeting to last no more than one hour. That'd be good, if we can do it. Oh, I think we will. Right. I'll just check the room. I'll come with you. Hey, What happened to all the chairs? We're going to have a stand-up meeting. It's one of the ideas I got from the conference. You mean we'll have to stand the whole time? Yes. But it'll make the meeting much shorter. When people speak, they'll stick to the point and not waste time talking about things that are not important. Hmm, interesting. You see, there was a really good presenter at the conference, a researcher from Cambridge University. She explained the science to us. She said that if you stand up, it activates the body to pump more oxygen to the brain. Basically, we think more quickly when we stand up. Really? Is this a new idea? Uh, not at all. During the First World War, British Army officers used to hold all their meetings standing up. And that was a hundred years ago. I didn't know that. So, do you plan to hold all our meetings like this? Uh, no. Only our staff meetings at the beginning of every week. OK. Uh, by the way, I've just thought of one possible problem. What about George? He's the best ideas man we've got, but he's over 60 now. I'm not sure we should ask him to stand up for a whole hour. Oh, right. I'd forgotten about George. Thanks for reminding me. Of course we'll provide a chair for him. And anybody else who really needs it. Ah, here they come now. I wonder how they'll react to this. Usually people don't like it when things change. Uh, don't worry. I'll start by explaining why we're doing this. I'm sure they'll love the idea. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that.
That is the end of question 1. Now go on to question 2. Look at question 2 on your exam paper. You're going to hear about a teenage gymnast who became world famous. The text will be in two parts, each with a different task. But first you have 30 seconds to study the two tasks. Now listen to part one. Olga Corbett was born in May 1955 in Grodno, a small town in Belarus, which at the time was still part of the Soviet Union. From an early age, she showed great ability in gymnastics and was noticed by a professional coach. The Soviet government was always looking for future sports stars who could win Olympic medals for their country. So at the age of nine, Olga was sent to a special sports school. She was very small for her age, but her coach was amazed at how brave she was. She used to try gymnastic moves, which were actually quite dangerous. As a result, she often injured herself during training. But finally, after years of hard work, she was chosen for the Soviet team, which went to the 1972 Olympic Games in Germany. There, she won three gold medals and one silver. But it wasn't really her gymnastics that impressed people. It was her personality. There was something special about her. Sports fans all over the world loved her, especially her smile, which now appeared in magazine photos everywhere. At the age of 17, she was suddenly an international superstar. Now listen again and complete the task. Olga Corbett was born in May 1955 in Grodno, a small town in Belarus, which at the time was still part of the Soviet Union. From an early age, she showed great ability in gymnastics and was noticed by a professional coach. The Soviet government was always looking for future sports stars who could win Olympic medals for their country. So at the age of nine, Olga was sent to a special sports school. She was very small for her age, but her coach was amazed at how brave she was. She used to try gymnastic moves, which were actually quite dangerous. As a result, she often injured herself during training. But finally, after years of hard work, she was chosen for the Soviet team, which went to the 1972 Olympic Games in Germany. There, she won three gold medals and one silver. But it wasn't really her gymnastics that impressed people. It was her personality. There was something special about her. Sports fans all over the world loved her, especially her smile, which now appeared in magazine photos everywhere. At the age of 17, she was suddenly an international superstar. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Olga Corbett was born in May 1955 in Grodno, a small town in Belarus, which at the time was still part of the Soviet Union. From an early age, she showed great ability in gymnastics and was noticed by a professional coach. The Soviet government was always looking for future sports stars who could win Olympic medals for their country. So at the age of nine, Olga was sent to a special sports school. She was very small for her age, 
but her coach was amazed at how brave she was. She used to try gymnastic moves, which were actually quite dangerous. As a result, she often injured herself during training. But finally, after years of hard work, she was chosen for the Soviet team, which went to the 1972 Olympic Games in Germany. There, she won three gold medals and one silver. But it wasn't really her gymnastics that impressed people. It was her personality. There was something special about her. Sports fans all over the world loved her, especially her smile, which now appeared in magazine photos everywhere. At the age of 17, she was suddenly an international superstar. Now listen to part two. However, after this high point in Olga's life, things became difficult for her. She was unpopular with the other girls, who thought she put herself above the team. In 1976, she again appeared in the Olympics, this time in Canada. But by now, she was already in her early 20s, in a sport dominated by teenagers. She also suffered from repeated injuries to her back. This time, she was only able to win one individual medal. Soon afterwards, she retired from the sport and returned to Belarus. There, she tried to become a gymnastics teacher, but was never really successful. One problem was her lack of education. As a child, she had spent all her time training and only one or two hours a day studying. This did not help her when she herself became a teacher. Then, in 1986, her life was changed again when the Chernobyl nuclear disaster happened not far from where she lived. She decided that it wasn't safe to continue living in an area so badly affected by radiation. She moved to the United States, where she now lives quietly with her husband in New Jersey. She doesn't teach any more, but still sometimes gives interviews to sports journalists who visit her. Of course, they all ask her about 1972, when she was, for a short time, the most famous teenager in the world. Now listen again and complete the task. However, after this high point in Olga's life, things became difficult for her. She was unpopular with the other girls, who thought she put herself above the team. In 1976, she again appeared in the Olympics, this time in Canada. But by now, she was already in her early 20s, in a sport dominated by teenagers. She also suffered from repeated injuries to her back. This time, she was only able to win one individual medal. Soon afterwards, she retired from the sport and returned to Belarus. There, she tried to become a gymnastics teacher, but was never really successful. One problem was her lack of education. As a child, she had spent all her time training and only one or two hours a day studying. This did not help her when she herself became a teacher. Then, in 1986, her life was changed again when the Chernobyl nuclear disaster happened not far from where she lived. She decided that it wasn't safe to continue living in an area so badly affected by radiation. She moved to the United States, where she now lives quietly with her husband in New Jersey. She doesn't teach any more, but still sometimes gives interviews to sports journalists who visit her. Of course, they all ask her about 1972, when she was, for a short time, the most famous teenager in the world. Now listen for the last time and check your work. 
However, after this high point in Olga's life, things became difficult for her. She was unpopular with the other girls, who thought she put herself above the team. In 1976, she again appeared in the Olympics, this time in Canada. But by now, she was already in her early 20s, in a sport dominated by teenagers. She also suffered from repeated injuries to her back. This time, she was only able to win one individual medal. Soon afterwards, she retired from the sport and returned to Belarus. There, she tried to become a gymnastics teacher, but was never really successful. One problem was her lack of education. As a child, she had spent all her time training and only one or two hours a day studying. This did not help her when she herself became a teacher. Then, in 1986, her life was changed again when the Chernobyl nuclear disaster happened not far from where she lived. She decided that it wasn't safe to continue living in an area so badly affected by radiation. She moved to the United States, where she now lives quietly with her husband in New Jersey. She doesn't teach any more, but still sometimes gives interviews to sports journalists who visit her. Of course, they all ask her about 1972, when she was, for a short time, the most famous teenager in the world. Thank you. That is the end of the listening examination. Now go on to the next question.